When I bought my router table, I also bought this box joint jig from Rockler. The only thing I've made with it so far is this walnut box. Thankfully my first time went well and I didn't waste a bunch of walnut. I thought I would use it much more than I have, but then life got busy. Recently I decided I needed to use it and I've been wanting to make a knife holder. So in this video I'm going to use it to make an open air box joint knife holder. I started out my kitchen with a knife block we already own. I measured that to get an idea of how big it might need to be. Soon I realized that it won't matter since my wife isn't going to let me keep it in the kitchen and all I need to do is figure out how long my knives are so I can use them to take pictures when I'm finished. Oh, it says how long the blade is right there on the knife. I guess I didn't need a tape measure after all. I'm using some white oak offcuts from a copy table I made with the metal base I welded. I borrowed my neighbor's welder and attempted to weld for the first time. I have footage of that build, but as I just said, life is busy, so maybe I'll edit the video Anyway, I'm measuring out my cuts, and then I'm going to cut them down to size over at the miter saw. I'll have some off cuts, so I'll be able to dial in my jig with those. In order to make the box joints, I need to switch out the collet on my router to the half inch collet size since I'll be using a half inch spiral upcut bit. I've had some issues getting the bit low enough using the lift, but I fixed it by mounting the router a little bit lower in the lift this time. And here I am, setting the height of the router bit and the width of the jig. I have no idea how to explain it, so if you buy a box joint jig for your router table, I suggest either finding a different video or reading the instructions. <laughs> Now that it's set up, basically, the next step is to dial it in with some test pieces. Ideally, you want to use the same wood you're using in your project. And we use the first piece as a spacer for the second piece. Then you can see how well your setup was. Alright, so we'll give it a test fit, and as you can see, the box joints are too loose, so we'll have to make some adjustments, and I did that three times, and then I had things good enough to where I could pound them together with a mallet, and that should just about do it. And while you watch me make cuts for the actual piece, I'll give you a very important tip. It's better to have the router a bit of too high than too low. You can always cut or sand off the fingers after you glue up. If they're too short, you'll probably have to start over. The router footage is mostly boring, so I won't show it all. Just, just make sure you pre-plan your cuts so each side fits into the other side correctly. So I'm guessing this test fit did not go well because I have a lot more fingers than 
in my original test pieces. I ended up just sanding each opening for a slightly looser fit rather than make all the adjustments and redo the cuts. Now it was time to decide how to space the top. Half inch spacing like the size is too big and the shoulder of the blades won't sit properly. I ended up going with a quarter inch spacing. So then it was back over to the router table to make the cuts. Everything was lined up and I was cutting away, cutting, cutting, all oh, more cutting, wait, wait, something's wrong. Oh, somehow the jig slipped and I did this. I had to trash this piece and start a new one. Thankfully this one went as planned because I didn't have any more white oak. For the last step before glue up, I needed to cut some half inch strips to create the slots to insert the knives. I cut out a few pieces just to test it out. I probably should have made the slots a little more narrow, but this will work. And here's just a basic glue up, putting glue on all the joints and then I'm gonna put them together. And since they're still too tight, we're gonna use some clamps to force everything together and hope the wood doesn't split. And now we'll just glue up the other side. Clip it back together and use a block of wood to apply a little more even pressure and check for square even though I don't know what I'm going to do at this point if it's not square and this is what I was talking about earlier I thought my bit was higher than I wanted but it was actually lower I wanted the fingers to sit proud so I could sand the back the fingers aren't too low so I was able to hide it by sanding it flush and then removing a little thickness for the sander to make it transition nicely. And we'll just put those strips in place. Oh, wait, not that way. Oh, this one doesn't work. Let's try this one. There we go. Now try the knife. And perfect. The sides wanted to bow out slightly when I was trying to glue this up. So I have a clamp with very light pressure holding them together and now we're just going to glue the strips in place just a couple brushes of glue and you get the idea and we're just going to add some cutting board finish to this or butcher block finish whatever you want to call it and it's weird I have no idea why the top strips are such a lighter color than the body but I think it kinda looks good now I took it up to my kitchen to put the knives in and see how it looks it'll never be in my kitchen on display anywhere It's just going to sit in my workshop and collect dust until I decide to throw it out. Or maybe I'll give it away. <laughs> 